Well, good evening, and I'd like to call to order this committee the whole meeting for the Town of Sogging Shores and extend a welcome to everyone in the chambers this evening. Our first order of business is a declaration of pecuniary interest, and I'll remind every member of your responsibility to do so. The next item is additions, deletions, or amendments to the agenda. We have none, nothing under that. And the next item then is <coughs> delegations. This evening we have one delegation. We have uh, Stelina Williams, Matthew Mead, and Frank Saunders talking about the public engagement results for the Ontario Nuclear Innovation Institute and Museum Archive Expansion. So welcome, Stelina. All right. <clears throat> so... Thank you all for um, ha having us here uh, to present to Soggy and Shores Council. Uh, we wanted to take the opportunity to present to Council on the proposed location of the Nuclear Innovation Institute uh, to do to kind of achieve three objectives today, to provide an overview of information received from our neighborhood information sessions held earlier this summer, to continue the dialogue with Soggy and Shores and its community members, as this is an ongoing process for engagement and information gathering, and to clarify some details on what we currently know about the Institute functions and operations. So for background, um, briefly, on May 16th, Bruce Power and the County of Bruce announced a new partnership to establish an Innovation Institute. And at that time, it was also announced that the location of choice uh, being considered was on the property beside Bruce County Museum and Cultural Center in Southampton and it would align with the museum expansion that had already been planned. Uh, the location was identified as a, the preferred location because it appeared to be a natural fit building on the value of history, education, and research that encompasses the museum and brings together ideas and expertise to advance um, excellence and collaboration. So in order to determine if this was in fact the most suitable location, a local dialogue with the community of Soggy Shores, specifically Southampton, began uh, to share information on what we knew about the Institute at that time, as well as gather feedback early in the development process. So the intent of the initial neighborhood information sessions were really to, to surface and understand what community concerns there might be in order to consider and incorporate this feedback throughout the development process. And we did recognize that it was fairly early in the process to go out into the community, um, and we wouldn't necessarily have all of the answers. But what was important is that we understood what the questions were, so that as we move forward, we ensured that we could appropriately respond to these questions. So just for an update on the, just for an overview of the neighborhood information session. So to date, we ha to date, we had two neighborhood drop-in sessions, uh, one held on June 12th and one held on July 5th at the museum with at least one or more planned uh, this fall. No date has been set for that yet. In terms of outreach to inform the community about the sessions, um, formal letters and invitations to uh, attend were emailed to both chiefs, the chiefs of Saugeen Ojibwe Nation and Chippewas of Nation, uh, excuse me, of Nawash, unceded First Nation, and to the council, uh, and to the council of the town of Saugeen Shores, to yourselves. Uh, residents and businesses in Southampton and Saugeen First Nation were also mailed an invitation using Canada Post uh, Precision Targeter in advance of both sessions. Uh, and additionally, invites were emailed to both BIAs, uh, Saugeen Shores Chamber of Commerce, GC Houston Public School, the historic Saugeen Métis, the local Indigenous Economic Development Officers, the two school boards, the three neighboring churches, the Southampton Craft Show, and anyone who had attended or submitted feedback at the first session or in advance of the second session. Uh, we also promoted the session through the Bruce County Museum social media pages as well as on the museum website. Um, in addition to advertising directly for the sessions, we also encourage those unable to attend to provide feedback so that you didn't have to be at the session to provide feedback. Um, and that and that continues. Uh, the events had 32 people attend the first session, which included an informal meet and greet with representation from Bruce Power and Bruce County on hand to answer questions. 55 people attended the second session where there was a formal presentation followed by a question and answer period. So in total, 82 different people attended one or one of the sessions, five people attended both. Um, and on August 2nd, we presented to Bruce County Council a summary and overview of the feedback received, um, which included feedback from the two, two sessions, as well as 19 feedback forms and 22 feedback emails received from the time we launched the session until the presentation was made to County Council. So the feedback that was presented at County Council is the same feedback you'll be receiving t uh, today. 
So since August 2nd, we have received additional feedback, and that will be incorporated in a future report back as the feedback is, is ongoing. Uh, before I pass it over to Matt to go through the uh, feedback received, we thought it was important to, to provide a few points of clarification around what this is and what this isn't. Um, as a number of inaccuracies and misrepresentations about the project kind of surface during community dialogues. Um, so I just wanted to go through a few of, the, of those pieces. So a couple things the Institute will not be. It will not house radioactive laboratories or materials or be a CNSE licensed facility. Um, it will not house medical or clinical laboratories. It will not be an industrial site, and it will not have any influence over the museum or its exhibits. A couple of things around kind of what it will be. It will be respectful of Fairy Lake's natural setting. It will have a low number of users and visitors. It will be a learning institution kind of designed for collaboration and research. It will be of a height conducive to the existing skyline in keeping with the current surroundings. Uh, the size dimensions, although continue to be explored, it will fit into the current footprint. And the museum expansion archives uh, will be respected. And I'm just going to pass it on to Matt to go through the feedback. Great, thanks, Delina. Good evening, everyone. And so what we've heard... Um, so we've heard the community's feedback on a number of topics, and in reviewing the, uh, the feedback that we have received, uh, a number of themes have begun to emerge. And so these themes that we're seeing uh, form the basis for the categories that I've got here. And so uh, for my part of the presentation tonight, I'll, I'll quickly give a brief description of the different uh, categories and provide a couple of examples of the kinds of comments that we would categorize under each, each of these. And so the first one is access to and availability of information. And so we heard from the community a desire to learn more and to make the project information readily available. Um, and so some of the examples of the kinds of comments that we included here would be, when is your next meeting? Um, where is the information available that you presented tonight? Uh, can you provide some specifics or, or can you comment on the timeline for the project, the, the scope, the operational details, uh, and the content? What's inside this building that you're proposing? So the second category is building design details. And so we heard from the community a, a desire to review and have input on the building design options. And so uh, the kinds of comments we heard under this were, what's the built form going to look like? Height, size, that kind of thing. What kind of building materials are you going to use? Glass, steel, uh, concrete, that kind of thing. Uh, and will there be uh, noise? So uh, potential for increased noise or dust or pollution, that kind of thing. Those are the kinds of comments we heard under that one. The third category is the museum expansion, the archive, as well as suggestions for alternative locations. And so we heard from the community a desire for details on how the museum, museum expansion fits into the overall vision. And so the kinds of comments under this category would be, what's public access look like? Um, what about future expansion opportunities? Um, can you provide specifics on the types of facilities that might be shared between the institute and the museum? Um, and the desire to uphold the neutrality of the museum. The second part of this category is um, alternative locations for consideration. And so we heard things like Port Elgin, Concordon on the Bruce Power site, um, the north side of the property, the CAW Conference Center, uh, the Southampton Market, uh, away from downtown, away from the school, uh, and the opportunity that it might present as a terrorist target. The fourth category is the preservation of heritage. And so we heard a desire to preserve Southampton's heritage, principally the house that uh, exists on the property. And so the fifth category is parking and traffic. And so uh, it's, it was recognized that there's a, a need to address increased parking and traffic demands, especially in relation to the impact that increased traffic may have on the students traveling to and from J.C. Houston Public School. And so the last category is aesthetics. And we heard a desire to maintain neighborhood aesthetics uh, and comments like a wall of buildings would be unappealing, um, you know, please enhance the natural setting of Fairy Lake, uh, consider preserving as many trees as possible, uh, and add to the green space rather than remove it. And so that's a summary of the kinds of categories that we're, we included. And so next is by the numbers. And so in total, we received 41 pieces of correspondence from the community, with many highlighting more than one area of feedback, uh, 89 comments in total uh, across the categories that I've just noted. 
And so overall, the frequency of comments was fairly evenly distributed across the feedback categories, with the most common uh, access and availability of information at 24%, separated by just 14% from the least common, so both parking and traffic concerns as well as uh, maintenance of neighborhood aesthetics, both at 10%. And so uh, building design details uh, made up 22% of all the comments that we received. Uh, the archive and, and alternative locations made up 19% uh, of the feedback received. And uh, preservation of heritage made up 15%. And so once uh, this feedback was categorized, comments were then assigned a rating across the five-point scale from unsupportive to supportive. And so of all the comments we received, most were rated as neutral in tone at uh, 51%, and 31% was rated on the positive side of the spectrum, so 9% supportive and 22% supportive with concern, and 18% on the negative side of the spectrum, so 1% unsupportive and 17% unsupportive with concern. And so I can give a couple of uh, examples of the kinds of comments that were, were rated across the scale. And so, for example, um, unsupportive, an example of an unsupportive comment would be something like, an office building would be a blight on this property. So an example of unsupportive with concern, I oppose this project because it limits the future expansion opportunities of the museum. A neutral comment would be something like, please consider the Southampton market as an alternative location. Supportive with concern would be represented by a comment something like, this is a great idea, but parking and traffic needs to be appropriately addressed. And then supportive would be, this is a great idea, I'm so glad that Southampton is being considered. And I think the take home from all of the feedback we received is that the majority of the comments we received uh, provided insightful feedback and offered the opportunity for us to incorporate the feedback from the community as well as try to mitigate their concerns. And that's what I'll speak to next. And so going by category, I'll uh, talk about the approach that we've taken as well as what our, our planned approach is going forward. And so in general, under uh, availability and access of information, um, attendees of the neighborhood drop-in sessions were appreciative of the opportunity to provide feedback at the neighborhood drop-in sessions and at their convenience via email. Uh, and most were interested in learning more about the project. We are working with a number of consultants to help us determine uh, these details, the kinds of details that the, the feedback has indicated they're looking for. So things like a business plan, the operational model, the governance structure, the financing, architectural drawings, parking and traffic. And so once uh, complete, the results and options for consideration will be made available and presented at the next neighborhood drop-in session, which is scheduled for this fall. In the interim, all public engagement resources, so the media release uh, from May 16th, poster boards from our June 12th session, as well as the presentation from July 5th, have been distributed electronically to all who have attended or submitted feedback. Additionally, the, uh, an institute website is currently in production, and all information will be accessible here as it becomes available. And so the next category is building design details. And so a high-level description of our concept for the Institute was presented at both sessions. However, the desire to review and provide input on conceptual architectural drawings still remains. And so we are working with an architectural firm, Reich and Petch Architects, to develop conceptual drawings for the Institute. And the planned approach is to present a number of options for review and input at the next neighborhood session in the fall. The third category, the museum expansion and alternative locations. So the expansion of the archives continues to uh, remain an important part of this project and is included in the overall vision of a campus style center that incorporates the institute into its landscape. The same architectural firm has developed floor plan layouts for the museum expansion and the preferred option, uh, which is the result of a previous public consultation, was presented to residents during the July 5th neighborhood drop-in session. Uh, and the floor plan option that was presented is supported. As noted in the May 16th media release and reiterated at both sessions, the Institute will be established in Southampton. The location of choice is adjacent to the Bruce County Museum and Cultural Center. A local dialogue with neighbors and the community has and is occurring around this or potentially other options within Southampton. So the fourth category is um, uh, heritage. And so in order to accomplish our vision of a campus-style community hub, the existing house will likely need to be removed. 
the opportunity to incorporate features from the house, so things like a facade, brickwork, pocket doors, windows, uh, into the new build represents a suitable compromise that is supported by most. The fifth category, parking and traffic. So our goal in assessing and addressing potential increased parking demands uh, and traffic created by our proposal is to work towards a complete street, as defined in the Grey Bruce Health Public Complete Grey Bruce Public Health Complete Streets Policy and Implementation Guide. And so the definition of that in this guide is as follows. A complete street is designed for all ages, abilities, and modes of travel, where safe and comfortable access for pedestrians, cyclists, transit users, and people with disabilities is integrated into transportation planning. And so preliminary outreach to the town of Sogging Shores has occurred with the hope of collaborating and coordinating our approach into the town's transportation master plan. Working with the town and a transportation consultant, the planned approach is to present any resulting findings, recommendations, and approaches, including traffic calming methods, measures, uh, and measures to reduce risk to all road users for review and input at the next neighborhood drop-in session this fall. Lastly, aesthetics. So all the comments across the spectrum within this category have requested the new build to be in keeping with the existing built form of the museum and incorporate it and or enhance the idyllic natural setting of Fairy Lake. This is our intention and as, no, uh, as previously noted, we're working towards some conceptual drawings uh, that will be shared for public review and input at the next neighborhood drop-in session. And so thank you very much uh, for your time and attention. Uh, and just before I hand it over to Frank, I just wanted to reiterate that tonight's delegation represents a moment in time uh, and that we are continuing to both request and receive feedback from the community, which we will, we will incorporate into a future report. I would also add that uh, this work has begun uh, as I've just described under the mitigation opportunity. So we are working with uh, both Mars and Deloitte to figure out the business plan, the business case, the operations, the governance, the finance. We're also uh, working with an architect to develop conceptual drawings for input and review. Uh, we've reached out to a transportation consultant, again, is to uh, try to understand our parking and traffic issues, as well as help us work towards a complete street. Uh, and lastly, an, an archaeologist is working to provide an archaeological assessment. And so next steps, as, I, as I've noted, uh, we have plans for uh, a neighborhood drop-in session this fall where we can come back and share the information as it becomes available uh, through this work of, of a number of consultants, as well as uh, our, our intent to uh, update and bring forward a, a future report to Bruce County Council. So with that, I'll, I'll hand it over to Frank Saunders. I come still on. And thanks for a chance to talk. Uh, it was indeed Bruce Power that proposed uh, the Institute and proposed the location. And I mean, honestly, the reason we did that is just an idyllic location for this type of thing. When you think of a sort of academic pursuit with the study of history on one side and the study of the newest of the new and the other, there's something that just feels uh, very good about that. Uh, the, the location close to the Southampton uh, Downtown uh, really just reminds you of the small college towns that used to exist when I was younger and going to college. I'm not sure too many of them exist anymore. Uh, and it just felt to us like the ambiance there that the, that the location really suited uh, what it was that uh, we were trying to do and trying to uh, reach out to others to uh, join with us in. So that's really why we chose the location. That's why we suggested the location uh, from our point of view. Obviously, we don't have the final say, but we hope people ultimately will agree with us. I do think that the early consultation was, was very good and very productive. I recognize it's a bit difficult when people suggest things and you don't actually have anything to give them back because you haven't designed it yet or done that work, uh, then it feels like uh, you don't have any answers and indeed you don't. But I do assure everyone we are listening to the comments and we are trying to incorporate them. Uh, I wanted to mention a little bit about safety because uh, looking at us there and say we're just getting engaged in the, in the traffic and the parking study, but I don't see why we can't make recommendations that actually will improve upon the current level of safety even not not make it worse I, I mean uh, to me when I look at that and I look at the challenges there uh, if we can't actually offer something that's even better than what's there today I'm going to be very surprised of course in the end of the day that'll be this council's choice but uh, we certainly will propose uh, what we think will be supportive and hopefully you will all agree with us and yeah we're certainly open to questions on it and uh, next time we come back we'll have some comments uh, some concepts and some other things to show people which I think will start to answer those questions a bit thank you
Thanks very much, Frank and Stelina and Matt. And I guess uh, commi uh, questions from committee. <coughs> Councillor Madison. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And through you, uh, first off, Stelina and Matt, I have to apologize. I was at the meetings, but I did not fill out a form, so your data is a little off. Um, and I think 85 um, people attending is a good number, but it, it's not really something that you can base any data on because it's only a, such a, a fraction of a percentage of the population. Um, I look forward to this. Uh, this is a, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for, for Bruce County and Soggy Shores in particular. This puts us right on par with, with the think tank that's in Waterloo, uh, Silicon Valley, and California. The things that um, can come out of this and in joint partnership with universities and giving our, our local students something to look forward to is fantastic. I know that Bruce Power will look into every aspect of this. That'll be the, one of the safest places to go to. It'll be one of the most beautiful and aesthetically pleasing buildings that we have. It'll match right in with our museum and the culture of the town. So anything I can do to help, let me know. But I look forward to this and thank you very much for bringing it forward. Councillor Grace. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a couple of questions, if I may. Um, so the first one, I guess, uh, maybe is for Matt and Stelina because it's about the uh, mail-out of the invitations. Um, so I just wanted to clarify, you said that your invita you mailed invitations to all residents and businesses in Southampton and Saugeen First Nation. Um, was that sent to specific addresses or by bulk mail? Sorry. Yeah, so it is It is a bulk mail-out. Uh, Precision Tracker is a uh, Canada Post bulk mail-out. Um, uh, it came to our attention, I think, at the, the last meeting there that some people had opted for no flyers and maybe didn't receive that. So um, I think if we do it uh, again in the future, we'll have to try to figure out a better way to, to get the word out. Uh, yeah, I'd appreciate that because, um, for instance, I did not get an invitation to... M I live in Southampton. I know many people who didn't. Um, and I think about 20% of Southampton mailboxes have a no bulk mail order mm -hmm. on them so that they would not receive that information. And I know Bruce Power is aware of that because they've used that system to mail out their emergency booklets and run into the same problem. So hopefully you come up with a different system. I know it might be uh, challenging. Um, one thing I would suggest, I was surprised to see on your list of organizations that you didn't contact the Southampton Residents Association. Um, they have a significant number of members and they would help you get the word out and advertise. So my suggestion is you do that, I can give you a contact name. Yeah, actually, in fact, the president is in the room tonight. Yeah, I was uh, speaking with them earlier and so okay. we've, we've connected. Great. Um, I'd like to um, now turn to your survey. Um, and you mentioned that this was based on 41 pieces of correspondence. Um, Councillor Matheson has already, re already referred to the fact that this is a fairly small um, sample. Um, just to give you some background on, on population, according to the 2016 census, there were 3,160 residents in Southampton aged 19 and over. And that doesn't count the additional 1,000 or more summer residents who own property here, um, who, by the way, also didn't receive invitations because most of them don't have mail, mailing addresses in Southampton. Uh, so by my calculation, 41 responses from a population of about 4,160 adults is using feedback from less than 1% of the population um, to release a story indicating support for the institution in this location. Um, so uh, when I read the news reports, it didn't mention the fact that this was based on 41 pieces mm -hmm. of correspondence. Was that something you gave the news media? Uh, so the report that we brought to Bruce County Council would be available publicly online. Um, in terms of giving it directly to the press, no. Okay, thank you. Um, and you did mention that um, you've received more pieces of correspondence since you published the report in uh, early August. Um, 
will, and you will be writing a new report, will you also do an updated press release which would include that new information? That's a good idea, it's something that we'll definitely consider, yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, I wanted to just uh, go to something that you mentioned in your presentation, it's also in the report. It's in the section in the report that's entitled Mitigation Opportunity and Suggested Approach, um, the Preservation of Heritage, uh, particularly the um, incorporation of the features of the rectory the, uh, into the new build. And one of the things that uh, you mentioned in the report, um, and I'm quoting, uh, the opportunity to incorporate features from the house, facade, brickwork, brickwork, pocket doors, windows, etc., into the new build represents a suitable compromise that is supported by most. And you also mentioned that phrase, that is supported by most. Um, how did you arrive at the conclusion that it's supported by most? Yeah, so we looked at the feedback and about 55% of those that responded at that time said that uh, incorporating features from the house would be, uh, make them uh, feel okay about what we're, what we're proposing. They would accept that as a, as a suitable compromise. Uh, can I ask, um, did you include more information than what is published and available to us tonight to get that conclusion? No, it's just um, the information that was available after the two uh, neighborhood drop ins Because I went through and analyzed it, and um, I could only find six comments in that chart that specifically said um, that they indicated support for incorporation of the architecture into the new build. Uh, those six comments were included in the columns preservation, parentheses, house, and then design details. So there were 19 comments in the, in the house column and 22 in the design, column, design details. Um, six out of a total of 41 comments is a little less than 15%. Yeah, so the, the table at the end is a summary. So if someone, if, if multiple people said uh, preservation of the house would be uh, a suitable compromise, it was just listed there once rather than every single time. So maybe if I could suggest the next time, um, you might want to put down how many times those, question, those statements were made because I just interpreted those as happening one time. Yeah, good. good point. Okay, thank you. Uh, my last question actually is... Um, maybe you or Mr. Saunders, because at the um, July 5th meeting, um, when you were asked um, when Bruce Power decided that this was the preferred location, and uh, this, the answer was early May, um, and someone asked if you had other locations in mind before that, and Mr. Saunders said, no, we haven't identified other locations yet. Uh, I'm wondering if that has changed, because in tonight's report, you mentioned potentially other options within Southampton. Yeah. Sure. Uh, potentially other locations, yeah, I don't know. It hasn't changed from our point of view. We're still recommending this location, and that's uh, that's the one we're for, right? Uh, uh, we are not actually looking at other locations at this point in time. So, so the report where you say potentially other options within Southampton is not at all something that is realistic. Uh, not at this time anyway. I guess we'll cross that bridge if we come to it. But uh, at this point, uh, where, we, where we see it fitting and where we see it meeting the need is there. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not sure where the comment came from exactly. But uh, some people suggested other locations, but we have not suggested other locations. Thank you. Okay. Councilor Minaj. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, a couple of comments and then, then a question. It really confounds me that that uh, we would look at this amazing future opportunity. We would face any kind of justice to a handful of people saying no. We've been this route before on a number of projects in this community. This community has every right to respect local neighborhood community input. I think that it's valid to do so. And some of these projects, they transcend the local community. They're good for the greater community, the greater community of all of Saugeen Shores. And I speak as, obviously, a Port Elgin Ward member, 
of this council. And I absolutely oppose the notion that we've got to do mail outs to specific people or find a way to get a mail out to those people who live in Southampton. If you're going to, if you're going to take that route, and, and I, I respect my colleagues' request for it, but I'm saying if you're going to take that route, then please consider all of Sogging Shores and possibly all of Bruce County because this is a Bruce County uh, proposal as well. So for me, it's, it's like 40 people in an education facility and we've got this ratcheted right up in, in a big, no, we're not going to do it. Well, I'll line up hundreds of people who will say, yes, we should do it in Sogging Shores. And yes, that preferred location is a really good one. And, and uh, that's who we are. That's what Sogging Shores has become. We've got some neighborhood feedback, and, and now we need to look at the broader community, all of Sogging Shores. That's my opinion. Um, what I'd like to do is, is ask about, well, it's kind of a spin-off of the same time, same thing. So when we talk about the next neighborhood community meeting, I would like to think that the next neighborhood community meeting will be in the Plex here. And it will allow everybody from Sogging Shores that wants to come and, and enjoy the conversation and, and put forward the, the, the points, the careful points about children's safety, which we all respect and, and want to do, with at least with, with respect to traffic and sidewalks. And, and, but it is only 40 people, supposedly, in, in a, in a semi-office education environmental building. It's all, of, it's all of that, but I, I really think that we're off on in, a, in, a, in left field here, uh, worried about the wrong thing. So my question to you would be, I certainly would like to know the process that, that determines whether or not you're going to follow through with a mail out and whether or not that could include everybody in Sogging Shores and maybe the greater good of Bruce County. And I, I don't know how you would accomplish that. I don't, I don't envy you trying. And, and I don't really think that we need to. I think that our local media can advertise this and we can put it on the Sogging Shores website and that should be good enough for a project of this, of this scale. That's my opinion. So the second thing is, would you, would you then consider the next meeting being central to Sogging Shores, the, the whole community? In response to that, I would say, yeah, absolutely. Councilor Dave Mayette. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you. Uh, Perhaps a little bit of a reiteration of what we've already heard, but uh, but one of the one of the job the jobs that all of us have around here is to go out and talk to people in the community. And, and over the past number of weeks, I've had the opportunity to go to a number of functions. It's summertime, and there's lots of barbecues and events going on. And 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 quite often the topic of this institute comes up. And and quite frankly, the the feedback that I get from people is that this is a great opportunity, and it's something that we should all be rallying behind. And, and there's a lot of excitement around it. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to the opportunity to come to the next uh, information center uh, session. And I'm going to be encouraging as many people that I can to come out and, and to give positive feedback that they talk about. Because let's face it, people who are, are motivated by, uh, by fears of uh, unfounded fears of traffic concerns and things like that are, are more prone to give written feedback than people who are in favor, which I believe are the mass, mass majority, which you know, human nature would, would say that if you're in favor of something, you just rah, rah, and you move on. You're not about to write an email about it. But uh, I will be encouraging people to do just that, is to, to give feedback and to make this happen, because this is, has, been, has been reiterated by a couple of colleagues, uh, a great opportunity and something that we need to get behind, all of us in Soggy Insurance. Thank you. I'm going to go here, then I'll get you. Deputy Mayor Charbonneau. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you guys for coming in and uh, doing this uh, presentation. I, just, I want to say that I really appreciate the approach that you're taking to this, starting with the community consultation early on and hearing that feedback. And I think the comments about mitigation of concerns that you made are important. And I think that that, I think from the majority of the concerns that I have read from your report or heard in the community, most of them uh, can be mitigated. Um, all of them, I think, all of them can be mitigated. 
uh, and uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing the work that you do on that to make sure that uh, those concerns are mitigated. Um, and I think, um, but it's important, I think, to um, when we talk about the, this location, to think about, you, you know, you guys have lots of options. There's plenty of land. You could go buy land. You could build a private building, and you could operate an institute on your own, and those 40-odd people would go work in that institute. We may never know what they're up to or see them or hear from them. The idea that you're thinking about doing this in a public building connected to a public use is really critical, I think, and something that an opportunity that we shouldn't overlook because it gives us the opportunity, all of us as a community, the opportunity to be involved in some way, I, I hope, in what you're doing there. Uh, and when we talk about uh, risks or uh, concerns about um, the effect on children, those are, uh, or you know, the issues around GC Houston, those are important and things that you're working on mitigating, but there's also the potential benefit to those students and all the students in the community. I think about my own three sons and the opportunity that they might have, uh, they don't go to GC Houston, but they go to other schools in the community of going to the museum and seeing what's happening with artificial intelligence and other things, uh, and nuclear sciences and, and Aboriginal studies uh, at this institute. So I, I guess I would just ask the question, position the question to you, because it's a question I've heard. Do you at this stage have an idea of how you will bring the community, our community, uh, students and, and everybody in the community and incorporate us into what's going on in that institute once it's up and running? Because uh, uh, I know you're at the early stages of this and you probably don't have all the answers to that, but I guess I'd just like to know, is it something that's on the radar at least? And do you have any comments? Yeah, no, no, absolutely, it's on the radar, and we have our, we have concepts of how we want to do it. And since we don't actually have agreements with other parties, it's uh, you know I talk to you about what we believe we would do. So, from a student education point of view, it's our belief that we'll get agreements with some of the, with the local school boards to use this as a project opportunity for students uh, starting uh, fairly young. So we introduce them to some of the IT and the tech world, and then with increasing difficulty. Uh, as they get older to uh, to get them involved in some challenging and interesting projects, uh, especially around uh, you know artificial intelligence and IT infrastructure and how that works. And so our view would be that we make space available for projects that uh, you know at some frequency during the year, uh, the school kids come, they work on their project for a day or half a day, whatever is appropriate. Uh, over a period of a few months, they turn their project into the school. And so the schools are getting a project. Uh, we're getting kids exposed to ideas, and hopefully they'll go off to university and other places and take uh, science-related courses so we can ultimately hire them back uh, and keep them in the local area, right? So that's a notion on the kids. Uh, in general, um, we plan to uh, run the institute as a not-for-profit organization with uh, participation on the board from uh, the county at least and, and maybe other municipalities. We haven't worked out the details. Uh, and so that we'd be sharing space uh, not only for Bruce Power work but also for community and county work as well through uh, innovation and the opportunity to try and build uh, more jobs, uh, you know, get the companies in there and have them work on some of our problems even and perhaps create products that they can sell to others and generally enhance uh, the world. But there's no reason why it only has to be nuclear, like there's nothing wrong with traffic studies or housing studies or understanding the, the labor uh, force in, uh, in the local area. All these things are subject to innovation and new ideas. And so the intent is, yeah, the reason we're not just plunking it up somewhere on a piece of land we bought is because we felt that that community involvement was an important piece of what we were doing. We obviously want to do our own things as well, but we certainly uh, want to get the community support too. Councilor Grace. Mayor, if I could just make a brief uh, comment about the mail-out. Um, what I'm referring to in the report is the statement that all residents and businesses in Southampton were mailed an invitation. Um, if that didn't happen, I'd like precision in the report because I think that that's important in terms of um, establishing the record of how the public was consulted. And so... Um, if you were unable to do that because of the limitations of the postal system or privacy issues or whatever, make a note of that and be forthright about that. That's what I'm asking for. Thank you. Councillor Mike Maya. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I uh, just wanted to thank uh, our, our three presenters for, uh, for your presentation this evening. And uh, I just wanted to say that the, uh, 
you know, the most important thing that we need to remember is that this is a wonderful, wonderful initiative for, for Saugeen Shores. And having chosen Southampton as a location, um, I, I think is a is a is a wonderful thing too, and I, so I, I don't think we need. I, I think we 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 need not lose sight of the fact this is a just a just a tremendous addition for Saugeen Shores. So we need to thank Bruce Power and 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 others for for bringing this forward. A question, a couple questions I have. Um, two two questions. Uh, when will we expect to see the conceptual drawings for for the facility? And, uh, and secondly, um, will the will the, will the public continue to have some input uh, into the into this entire process? And if they're uh, if they're uh, welcome to to have input, how how will that take place? How will you welcome the community to have further input in, into the whole process? And uh, so I guess I was just wondering, it's just coming back in September, um, early October. Uh, when's it coming back? So um, we have uh, engaged with an architectural firm, and so um, they have uh, they are kind of working on it right now. I would say, and so um, I would expect probably early September we should have um, some conceptual drawings and, and be able to share them. Um, you know, the, the the neighborhood drop in session for the fall hasn't been scheduled yet, but uh, as soon as we do that, I mean, that would be the the idea would be to have some of this consultant work done so that we could come back to the community and present what you know, the latest iteration of, of what we've learned. Vice Deputy Mayor Huber. I applaud some of the um, ideas you're bringing into the conversation because we've had those ideas mentioned and, and we haven't gone very far with them. One in particular that um, I, I would like to see come to fruition here somewhere is this idea of complete streets. So um, I hope during our transportation master plan process we talk a lot more about that. Um, so I'm glad that you're already talking about it too because um, there certainly is an opportunity there to do something different with, with the way people move around, either um, on a bike, by walking, um, on a scooter, or in a car or a truck. I like um, the idea that this is extremely close to downtown. Um, this is very close to where I live. Um, at times there's an awful lot of cars in the neighborhood, whether there's an event at the Coliseum, a funeral, or some um, a big Grand Fondo run. Um, so there's times when there are a lot of cars in that neighborhood, but it all works out, and it puts an energy onto the street, and, and all of that's healthy and, and good for the vibrancy of the community. Um, what I like about the location um, beyond that, that comment about the energy is that you mentioned just about sharing um, space with the museum and with some uh, potential community partners. We have um, a lot of um, space that's in the in our our realm that's very close um, to this. The Coliseum um, has great potential, has a larger space for some kind of event or activity or or opportunity associated with this. There's um, a, a town hall that um, maybe might get um, some upgrades and some expansion in the in the hopefully not not too far off in the future, but might be a way, a ways down the road. But there's space there that could be used by, by people who are coming to town. The fire hall has some space. There's three churches on that corner that, that have space. Um, that, that There's potential there for some revenue to some community partners too. The idea of having, um, and I, initially I didn't think it was 40 or 50 there on a, on a fairly regular basis. I, like it. I heard five to eight the first time that I went to a presentation. So I like the idea that there might be a few more people involved on a regular basis. There used to be um, two banks in Southampton. There used to be a couple of other businesses downtown that had people there year-round in an office-type setting that they would walk out the door to go have lunch somewhere or just walk out the door to take a break and they would be able to shop. Um, some of that is missing from downtown now. So it's good to imagine um, an entity that would put more people into the environment on a daily basis that would have lunch 
would have coffee breaks, would, would go out and, t and take a walk. So I find that very um, exciting to think about. I think there's a, an energy that would come from clustering some activities, and, and I look forward to seeing um, more information and in, in the concept drawings. Um, I'm worried about that, that wonderful heritage home on the corner. That heritage home, though, has no protections on it, so um, I understand that um, it can be knocked down. I'd like to, to hope that you can somehow um, imagine through a, a smart architect how to work some of that in. Um, there's a, a wonderful bookend at the other end of the museum that's a heritage building too, so there's, there's something there that I hope is possible with an architect. I do um, also appreciate the interest in, in looking at the aesthetics of, of Fairy Lake. One of the things we heard here not too long ago was that in terms of an accessible entrance to Fairy Lake, it's not that corner that's the accessible entrance. We, we talked about the potential to put a sign there saying the accessible entrance to Fairy Lake is way on the other side, um, coming in off um, Lakeland. The idea of, of imagining um, that space has this, this total space that, that would, would work together well and would um, open itself up and be an inspirational type set, setting. Um, that's very exciting to me. I was a GC Houston kid myself lots of years ago. Um, I walked that road to school um, um, when there were, uh, I'm not always a crossing guard there. I, I appreciate the, the concern about, um, you know, people walking and kids in particular, but um, there's also ways to, to mitigate that. And the, the idea that um, a child would be exposed to something a little bit different um, via participation in a museum program or just walking by a building that is beautiful and that something interesting is going on. That's, that's pretty exciting to think about for the future of Southampton. I, I do, though, um, have some reservations about a number of things, but I, I'm hopeful that, you know, as more information comes forward, that you are listening to people and that when the concept comes out, that, that it's something that will just enhance our civic pride and will... Um, continue to support a strong downtown because that, that's, I think, what most people in Southampton really want is a strong downtown. Thank you. Councilor Madison. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And through you, um, I just want to take this opportunity to commend Councilor Minaj. Four years ago at the beginning of our term, he said, I would like to see a think tank. Bruce Nuclear, a nuclear innovation institute of some sort come to this area and now four years later it is coming to fruition. So well done. And if you have any ideas on this week's 649, please let me know. <laughs> Thanks, Councilor Madison. I think that's, well, we've had some pretty good discussion here. And I first, first of all, I want to thank you, Frank and Stalina and Kathy and Matt for coming here this evening. I know I've heard this presentation at the county and I think it's important that you've come to the community here and updated us and keep us apprised of this uh, this initiative. I, I, I agree with uh, Councillor Dave Mayette. I, I go to many events in the community and there is a buzz about some real anticipation about some something that ex really exciting is potentially going to happen in Sogging Shores and, and uh, we're all looking forward to it. Uh, I know I, I attended the last meeting uh, on July the 5th and I um, great to the point there and I think you've got it right now you need to come with some answers to those questions and I know that's you're on track with that Frank and Matt and uh, I look forward to the next meeting in uh, wherever we hold it so thanks very much so the next item on our agenda then is a staff report to amend the business license bylaw for refreshment vehicles and our deputy clerk Tracy will present there thank you um, for the opportunity um, as you know, the business licensing bylaw is under review. Um, so we have a bylaw on council's agenda this evening with some of the requirements. To go in partnership with that bylaw, we've added a few recommendations to our business licensing bylaw. So they're noted in here. There's four points, um, which I'm sure you've read. I don't need to reread them. But it's just kind of helping the clerk's department who manage the business licensing um, procedure just better able to um, process your request and, and make everything efficient uh, questions just let me know okay then I'll read the recommendation we'll take some questions as uh, recommendations that council pass an amendment to the business license bylaw 98-2004 
to include special provisions for the refreshment vehicles in the core commercial zone. Questions? Councillor Madison. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, section 310, uh, number two, core commercial zoning. No person shall operate a refreshment vehicle on lands that are vacant or contain a building that has vacancies. Are we grandfathered? We asked this last time. Are we grandfathering this clause or will this be changed to affect the, any uh, operations that are presently working? So the, the, the ones that have a valid business license will be grandfathered. Please, Deputy Mayor Hubert. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to propose um, an amendment, um, and perhaps staff might have to work on the wording. Um, what's not clear, um, it's not clear that um, we're, we're excluding residential and institutional lots from this. So it, the way that it's worded, um, it's setting up um, that if you uh, are in the core, and the, re and the use of the lot is residential or institutional, it would enable a food truck to be there. So, um, you know, the, I think the intention is that um, vacant lots or um, lots that have um, one or more um, non-residential vacancies, no food truck, but um, I think there needs to be some clarification to make sure that um, it's, it very specifically includes um, residential and institutional uses on lots as being um, not locations for food trucks. Yeah, okay. we can work on that for the next, for the council. Okay. Councilor Minaj. I need, I need some help here. Thanks, Tracy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. But on, on the definition of, of a special event, is, is it possible that somebody could do something every week of the year? I mean, we're, we're, we're pushing, we're trying to push our, our BIA concepts on BIA spaces like the Port, Parkette in Port Elgin and, and the, the uh, car show in, in Southampton. They're, you know, they're eight to 12 week things and they could expand to 16 or 20 or more. So when we talk about special event, do I often think of of it meaning one off a one off special event, uh, not a not an every week concept? So can, can we can you enlighten me on that, or can we go back and and maybe further define what we mean by special event? I, I suspect most of the special events get a permit from us, right? So, but some of them, like the cruisers' night, will be for a number of nights. Some of them are one-off, so I think you'll find a variety of them. You know, like the. Okay, sure. Was it our intent that this was a one-off special event food truck thing, or is it, or is it our intent that it's okay if it's twenty times in the same place, twenty weeks in a row? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, I, I believe that our intent is is if it is uh, recognized as a special event, so not a singular event. If we're issuing a permit and it's for 20 times, that, that's 20 special events. It gets very difficult to manage uh, subsets of, of, of different things. Uh, if, if council wants us to do something different than that, we can certainly take that under advisement. Any further questions or comments? All in favor of the recommendation then? Opposed to me, that's carried. So. The next item on the agenda is a staff, uh, it's environmental services and transportation staff report for parking bylaw 51-2013 amendment and I believe our director of public amendment. So very quickly, it's to make it so that there's no parking between Waterloo and Goddard Street on Mill to allow the Corvette uh, Corral to be able to park there easily in the morning. So. History has shown that cars are left overnight in that area, and then it's difficult for them to get the barricades up, and they have to arrange getting those vehicles out when their owners come back. So this will prevent that, and the Pumpkin Fest people will be signing that area that say no parking for 24 hours for the festival. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, the recommendation is that Council amend parking bylaw 51-2013. 
13 to include no parking on both sides of Mill Street from Waterloo Street to Godrich Street from Friday, September the 28th at 5 p.m. until Sunday, September the 30th at 5 p.m. on the weekend of Pumpkin Fest. Comments, questions? Vice Deputy Mayor Huber. Thank you. It's, um, I'm just going to take advantage of the fact that it's about parking to um, ask uh, Amanda to uh, make a specific comment about um, the transportation master plan process, I think, will include opportunities to talk about parking generally. Through you, Mr. Mayor, yes. Okay, um, I noticed that something you sent us has two pop-up opportunities for the public to engage with the, the consultants, so I just wanted to give you a chance to mention those because they are at the end of this week. Sure, and there is a social media campaign going on to advertise it, but thank you for the opportunity. So on Thursday at Cruiser's Night, the consultant and myself will be at a booth looking for comments on traffic and transportation in Southampton. Um, and then on Friday between 12 and 2, they'll be at the Beach House on the Port Elgin Main Beach to do the same thing, to just gather information from visitors and residents. Of okay. Any further questions? All in favor of the recommendation? Opposed, if any, that's carried. <clears throat> so, uh, the next item is uh, communications petitions for committee of the whole information, and there's th three items there. Uh, and we have two reporters, the department heads, and I, I don't know if they're. Want to comment? Councilor Minaj. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd like to draw attention to Council, to, if they haven't seen it already, that it was a pretty good conversation over how you determine the height of a building um, in among other buildings or from ground level. And, and in some cases, we've had some creativity on this where, where the, uh, the foundation has been built and then the ground level has been raised to meet the foundation and then the height has been taken from the new ground level at the, at the top of the foundation, which is a good five or six feet higher. And so these are, these are potentially out of sorts with, the, with the, the neighboring buildings. So we've asked our authorities to come back with a, a general discussion uh, point to council to, to determine just how we want to, you know, if are we going to say that if it's 33 feet, it's from the general area, or are we going to do it from the top down and say, you're, if you're in among a bunch of buildings, you won't exceed the height of the other buildings that are, you know, if you're bulldozing a cottage and there are two neighboring cottages on either side, you won't build one higher than the two neighboring cottages. And I can, sh I will send council an example of, of how bad that has, has shown itself in uh, Port Elgin on Elgin Street. And uh, one, now we've got a three-story home has absolutely dwarfed the single-story home. Uh, it's like it's going to fall down on top of it. It's the way it looks. So it, it, this is coming forward, I hope, from staff, and I hope that council has a chance to discuss it further. Thank you. Councilor Mike Mayer. Mr. Mayor, are we on the report of de department heads at where we are? Or have I lost my spot? And uh, the next item is uh, um, information report on the Soggy Shores Life Saving Club 2018 successes. And our aquatic supervisor, Shan, is here. So we're going to give her an opportunity to tell us about this. Yeah, thank you very much for, uh, for inviting me. The in information report that you have in front of you is just uh, to talk about some of our successes this year, not only with the Soggy Shores Life Saving Club, uh, but with respect to our summer programming. Uh, these programs are led by our acting aquatic uh, supervisor, Michael Hunt, and seasonal staff, including uh, Alana Kozak. Uh, this year, the team did extremely well uh, for, in the 2018 uh, Waterfront Provincials. Um, the senior division, ages 16 plus, we actually had seven individuals competing with uh, uh, over uh, 100 individuals competing in, in total. Seven uh, came in third place, so we were pretty, uh, pretty proud of them. Our, our junior athletes, and that's uh, ages uh, seven through 16, they placed uh, first overall. 
Uh, you do have to remember that these individuals are, uh, uh, the, the, the field is coming from all across uh, Ontario. So uh, again, a big pat on, on their back. Uh, masters as well, we can't uh, forget them. Uh, that's ages ranging from 30 to 53. Um, we also placed first, so pretty proud of us. Um, this year's waterfront championships uh, that were held, they, uh, we uh, went down to Bluffers Park in Toronto. You'll remember that uh, last year, Sogging Shores hosted that, uh, that great event uh, with great success. So uh, that, was, uh, that was important to include in there. Uh, not included in the report, uh, just this past weekend, you'll, you'll hear a little scruff in my voice. I've been yelling at athletes for the last uh, two days. Uh, the seniors competed in their national championships uh, in Quebec, uh, Lac Simon, and uh, with, again, just seven rep, uh, uh, athletes representing us in a field of over 200 athletes, uh, they came a respectable seventh. So, again, really proud of them. Uh, we're also very pleased to be sending three of our very hardworking lifeguard uh, instructors to Australia this year. Uh, this no November, they will be competing. They've been chosen to represent Canada. Uh, for the um, World Championships that's happening in Adelaide. Uh, Carlin Reed, uh, Sebastian Raymer, and uh, Jordan Stott uh, have all been training hard with Coach Mike and others uh, and to get ready for the World Championships. And uh, all of them did very well um, uh, this past uh, weekend. Uh, these staff have also assisted with the summer's fundamental program, kind of key in our programming model. Uh, that included uh, 202 participants this year. It continues to be a, a popular program uh, that includes fitness, uh, teamwork, and water safety uh, slash rescue. Uh, also to be noted, our summer programs uh, exceeded over 800 kids uh, swimming in swimming lessons uh, in camps and, of course, the 200 in the fundamental program. So just wanted to give you a little bit of a, a heads up and an information on that. Well, thank you and congratulations, yeah, for the Councillor Mike Myatt. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, I just wanted to say, uh, Shauna, we, I uh, particularly, I'm sure all of Council will echo this. I, we're very, very proud of the work, and you should be very proud of the work you have done uh, to uh, to lead the, the charge with the Salgan Shores Life Saving Club. I was up at the pool today, um, up all, up there all week with my two grandkids. And um, they're in swimming lessons, and I, I, I stumbled across. Well, I went up in the lobby and looked at the uh, the board, with the board up top, and there was this article from 2008, nine, I believe, and and you were quoted, you were you you had been to Australia, and there was two world champions, two young gentlemen, you know their names, I should have written them down, but. Um, you, they mentioned you were, you were you're so related and in tears. I think from from that um, tremendous tremendous accomplishment that um, those kids um, brought back home to Saugeen Shores back in 2008, 9, 10, I think it was. And um, you know it's hard it's hard to uh, you know we we go back when that club was first formed, Sean, and you did a lot of work forming that club with 30 members. I read in the article today. And now you see 250 participants per year, and it's, so it's just—it's incredible how the Saugeen Shores Life Saving Club has evolved. I know Michael Hunt's done a lot of work with that as well. And I spoke to Council here a month or two ago about the importance of the Saugeen Shores Life Saving Club. If in fact we end up under the Y umbrella, and, and Mr. Mayor uh, supported me with this when he said, "Well, there'll be contractual negotiations with the Y." if in fact they do come to town, that we, we need to protect, not only protect the Saugeen Shores Life Saving Club, but we need to enhance that club. And I'll be, I'm going on record again this evening, that I'll be fighting very hard to make sure that that club is not only kept, supported, but enhanced. So I just want to thank you for the great work you've done dating back to 2007 when it was first formed. And today it's just, uh, it, it, you bring... The Saugeen Shores Life Saving Club brings a lot of recognition to Saugeen Shores, and, and, and you started it. You should be very proud of it. So I want to thank you. Councillor Madison. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's really very hard following Councillor Mayat when he's giving congratulations because he covers his bases. But I, too, want to say congratulations. Blushing you. Um, I have a young cousin from Cambridge who's been coming up for the last three, four years. Uh, he wasn't a very solid, strong swimmer when he started. 
He loves this program. He's competed last year in the huge event that was on in, in Sogging Shores on both beaches, and he was there every day this year, and his swimming has improved so much so that he, you can't get him out of the pool. Uh, the work that you and your helpers have done, Michael and, and um, Atlanta, is you can't go anywhere else but say, well done. I hope that you're able to... Uh, our staff, your staff, are able to find the funds. Uh, we talked about ways of hopefully helping out with that. So if anything, I can do anything to help with that, let me know. But congratulations, well done, and good luck in Australia. Thank you, and thank you, Shanna. And uh, so the next item is an information report. It has to do with the Main Street Revitalization Grant update. The report's there. If anybody has any questions, we'll take them. Councillor Madison. Um, it states in the report that both BIAs are looking at Wi-Fi. I think the Southampton BIA sent in, or I don't know if they sent in, but I know we discussed it last week. Um, there may be a different option with the, rather than the Wi-Fi. Um, it might be worthy to check with them. It's a great idea, but I think they were looking at some other idea for this grant, but we, we should check with the Southampton BIA. Yep. Yeah, uh, Councillor Matheson, we haven't heard that from them. So if, if, if I could speak to you after, if you know something or if you can pass that on, we, as we're filling out the uh, uh, requests as we speak. So if, if they've changed their mind, then we'd like to know that. Thank you. So that is the end of our agenda. So we'll take a motion to adjourn. Councillor Madison and <coughs> Councillor Rich, all in favour?